They did MRI scans. No neurologist could tell me what it was. I started researching myself. So I talked to one neurologist and I asked her if it could be something related to my IBS, something related to the food. She looked at me like I was from a different planet. She was like, there is no way that your food intake could have any influence on your neurological disorder. I read about this thesis about ketogenic diet on kids with epilepsy. I asked her about that and she was like, no, that's impossible. That doesn't make any sense. I, I firmly do not understand how you can sit here and say that. And then she was like, no, but I think we should get you on some epilepsy medicine to try and control your brain chemistry. I was like, that's it. I'm done. Here you will welcome it. And how, do, you, do you pronounce it Lhasa or how do you how do you pronounce your first name? Yeah, Lhasa is, uh, that's pretty damn good. I must say that's pretty impressive for an American yeah, and I'm, I'm get, you're you're somewhere in 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 Scandinavia or somewhere. I'm guessing by the accent. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, Danish, Danish. Danish. Okay. But right now, I I actually live in Bangkok. So oh, okay. I moved to. Okay, well, well, yeah. thank you. Thanks for adjusting to the time zone, guys. I don't know what time is it there in Thailand. 11 p.m. So it's not so bad. I just got back from uh, playing golf with my friends and dinner. So it's perfect timing before going to bed. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, <laughs> well, welcome. Well, well, tell us. Uh, well, tell us a little bit about your background, then, if you don't mind. Um. Well, I um, moved to Asia about seven years ago. Um, I got kind of tired of the rat race mm -hmm. back in Denmark. Uh, working my ass off, paying a huge amount of taxes, to be honest. And I got fed up. I said, I'm going to do something new. So I had a friend who lived in the Philippines. I went to visit him for a month and. I figured after a month, why would I go back home when I can probably make a living here in one way or another? Started doing some online e-commerce business and I stayed and I never went back. <laughs> That's basically it. Uh, met my wife uh, four years ago, got married and settled down and that was it. Moved from the Philippines to Thailand and haven't left. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I know a lot of people that do sort of remote business from from that part of the world and, and most of them seem to like it so i guess it's uh it could be an option for a lot of people although you yeah i mean you, it's great you leave a lot of friends. i like to play golf i like surfing so very good yeah. <laughs> very good well well tell us i mean this is a success story of some some part i believe so tell us a little bit about what what's going on in your life health wise and, and that sort of stuff since i was a kid I've, I've always suffered from headaches while growing up uh, nobody really knew why it wasn't that bad then five years ago i uh well if you want the whole story basically there was one morning i woke up i was sitting i was having my coffee all of a sudden my entire right side of the body got paralyzed mm. and i was thinking this is really strange so i started googling i didn't have any pain it was just my whole right side got paralyzed. I could move it, but I didn't have any control of it. So I started Googling, and the first thing that came up that is possibly a stroke, throw everything I had, went down to the lobby, got the security guard to follow me to the hospital. I got to the hospital, and they basically just locked it off. They were like, you probably did too many drugs. And I was like, I've, I've never done drugs in my entire life, so I highly doubt that that would have any influence on it. And then they're saying, oh, you just anxiety attack. I'm not really an anxious kind of person. They did MRI scans. They did everything. I went back to Denmark. I got more MRI scans. No neurologist could tell me what it was. I started researching myself. I've, I've always been training. I've also always been pretty good with my dieting. I've been doing intermittent fasting for 15 years. So I talked to one neurologist and I asked her if it could be something related to my IBS with my headaches, something related to the food. And she basically, she looked at me like I was from a different planet. I kid you not. Like she was like, there is no way that your food intake could have any influence on your neurological disorder. And I thought that was so strange because I remember after doing my own research that I read about this PhD thesis from Oslo with a doctor who did his thesis about ketogenic diet on kids with epilepsy. So, so I was, I asked her about that and she was like, no, no, that's, that's, that's impossible. I was like, it's, it's so weird. And I was like, 
that doesn't make any sense. I, I firmly do not understand how you can sit here and say that. And then she was like, no, but I think we should get you on some epilepsy medicine to try and control your brain chemistry. I was like, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> so then I went to see another neurologist. I flew back to Europe. And it was basically the same thing. Like nobody would listen to me. No, like people, they were literally laughing at me when I asked if this could be diet related, like my migraines attack. They said, yeah, I mean, if you drink wet wine or dark chocolate, I was like, that's not something that I take on a regular basis. Maybe once a month, I will have a share a bottle of red wine with my wife. That's it. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that would conclude in me having migraine attacks 20 days a, a month. Yeah, so you so, had, I'm sorry, so you, I mean, you basically, history of migraine attacks, I guess you're saying you have IBS, and then you had this episode of hemiparesis, and so you think it's related perhaps to nutrition, the doctors are like, no, that's crazy, there's no no reason to think that, correct? Yeah, so then I, they put me on all kinds of medication, and nothing helped, I, mm -hmm. I, I still had severe migraine attacks, I had extreme migraine auras with the zigzag vision, blurry vision, uh, feeling of floating around, dizzy spells, everything before and after my attacks. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to try the ketogenic diet. Like I'm going to see if it would actually have any effect on my migraine attacks when it has an effect on epilepsy, which is a neurological disorder. I thought maybe it's not going to help, but it's worth a try. It's, it's better than pumping my body filled with medication that doesn't even work anyway. So I went on the ketogenic diet. And after, I'd say, the first week, I had one migraine attack. After two weeks, I didn't have anything. After three weeks, I had one more migraine attack. And after a few months, I could count it on one hand how many attacks that I've had. And I used to have it 20 days a month. I was like, and you're still telling me it has no effect with my diet. So then, of course, I went back to the neurologist. And she basically said that I think it's all in your head. and uh, But your cholesterol is really high, so we might start you on satins. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I, I, I had I, I'd done enough research knowing that this doesn't make any sense. Like, it just makes no sense. So I actually think that the ketogenic diets really helped me. I just had a really hard time following the ketogenic diet with all the fat intake. So then I heard your podcast and Joe Rogan about the carnivore diet. So I was thinking, maybe it's not all about the ketones. Maybe it's just about eating good, solid food. So I changed to the carnivore diet. My IBS completely disappeared. I never had any stomach issues. I had one migraine attack in two months, which is the first time that happened in about seven years. I, I, I just couldn't believe it. My, I, I was mind blown. I was like, oh my God. God, I actually got my life back. Like I used to wake up at night as a 35 year old male sitting at the side of my bed with my, like, like this, just in so much pain from my headaches. And I was like, and a diet can fix that. And I was like, I did so much research and I just couldn't find anything online related to migraine attacks and diets. There was some, there was very limited information, like don't eat this, don't eat that, that can trigger this, that can trigger that. But nobody talked about fast food, high fructose intake, a ton of like all kinds of things that clearly trigger migraines with most people. At least that's my experience. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're, you're not alone in that. I've seen a number of people with migraines now uh, significantly improve or, or make them go away with dietary modifications, including ketogenic and carnivore diets. So there's something clearly there. I mean, it's un you know, as you know, most of the physicians don't have a lot of nutritional 
training and, and they're just kind of doing what they know, which is again, anti-epileptic meds, you know, membrane pulp, uh, stabilization medications, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, any of the anti-seizure medications on and on and on. And, um, so this, this switch to a carnivore diet, was this in Thailand? Was this, this was going on in Thailand? Yeah. Later there? Yeah. How? Yeah. I, I, I did all of this in Thailand. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, a meat based diet, right? So I, I, I will still eat my free range chicken. I'll still eat bacon. I'll still eat like pork. I try to eat mostly red meat because I just feel like it's more nutritious. It just fills me up better. Mm-hmm. Um, but getting good quality beef here can be an issue, but I got a delivery service that imports it from New Zealand so I can get decent quality there, but you also pay a price for it. Right. Um, yeah, but it's it's easy to maintain a, a diet like this. It, it's not that big of a deal. Like I, I think a lot of people stress out too much about a diet, but it's just it's just food at the end of the day. Yeah, it's a, and, and that's really good. I mean, it's, it's just food, and there are a lot of people that, that complain about this, and they'll say, "Well, you could have just done the same thing with a high protein calorie deficit." Somebody was telling me the other day, and I said, "Well, maybe, maybe not." I mean. You, you said you'd already practiced intermittent fasting. You weren't eating a bunch of junk through the years, and yet you still had these, you know, these migraine issues in the IBS. How, how is the IBS, by the way? Is that, is that the digestive, has that gotten better too? It's, it's gone. I, I have absolutely no issues. Like, but all throughout my childhood, like, like, my parents were great. They just didn't know any better. They thought that when you wake up in the morning, I should have yogurt, with a lot of sugar and then some Kellogg's or some oatmeal on top. And I had a bad stomach through my entire childhood. Yeah. And, and, that, and, and nobody knew why. Well, many people would, you know, would, would say that is a healthy breakfast, eat some oats, maybe a little fruit, maybe a little, a little yogurt or something like that. And that's a, that's, that's something a, nu- a nutritionist commonly would prescribe uh, to people here. And, you know, you went through that. And again, I, you know, in the United, I, I just got back from, from, from Europe. I spent, you know, some time in the UK and then down in Croatia and Bosnia and, uh, in Bosnia, technically Bosnia and Herzegovina, but there weren't, there wasn't the obesity rate and people are eating more natural foods, I suppose, than we do in the United States, but even still, uh, and I'm sure in Denmark, you don't have the, the, the obesity rates that you have in the United States, but even still with that relatively higher diet, you still had these issues, correct? Yeah, it's it's getting worse. Like you, you can tell just just by me living in Asia for seven years. Like I go back maybe once a year, but then because of COVID, I couldn't go back for two and a half years. And I honestly, I don't know if it's just my mind playing tricks on me, but I feel like there's getting more and more obese people in Denmark as well. Yeah, well, yeah, it's definitely spreading throughout the world, and we're seeing in India and China and all these other countries. Any any country that imports. Or adopts a Western style diet, which is all this processed food. It's, a, it's an absolute disaster for them. Um, you know, yeah. Thailand is pretty fairly tropical, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, it's you know, it's pretty warm. Oh, yes. a, lot, a lot of fruits. A lot of a lot of vegetarians and vegans hang out in Thailand too. I mean, it's a big. Oh yeah, it's a big big oh, place. Yeah. Do you oh. do you ever sort of does that do you ever run into those folks? Are there any kind of does, oh, does anybody oh, think oh, you're crazy oh, out there? Oh man, I've I've had my fair share of debates. So to speak, well, it's not really a debate because you can throw all kinds of scientific fact at a vegetarian person and they will just brush it off like it's nothing. It's irrelevant. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I honestly, at this point, I gave up. Like, I can't be bothered. Like, if, if people are, I meet some people who are really judgmental. It's like, oh, you eat that much meat. What about the environment? I'm like, you might want to read a few books before you start pushing that argument on me about meat being bad for the environment. I'm, I'm pretty sure that a lot of crops with gene modification and whatnot and pesticides, they're, they're probably pretty bad for the environment too, I'd say. Well, I mean, there's, I mean, there's no free lunches. I mean, you know, we got to eat and there's going to be an environmental impact. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, exactly. it, you know, so you've got it, but it, you know, honestly, Food production is a small percentage of, of any kind of environmental impact. It's there, but it's it's nowhere near some of these other things. And uh, it's it's just a narrative based thing. You know, a lot of most people get their education not from actually insightful, you know, ed, attempted education. It's, you know, watching the news, and the news is very much 
uh, narrative based depending on which channel you're watching. Oh, it is. It's, 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 it's sort of. Uh, Especially in the States. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> yeah. And also, there's another argument to be made. Like, for example, if I talk, I have a friend back in Denmark and his wife is vegan. And she was very much against my new diet. She mm -hmm. thought it was absolutely horrible. And how could I do this to the environment? And mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And I said, how much pollution do you think? it creates to transport a banana from Dominican Republic to Denmark on a container ship. How much pollution is, is that creating? Surely it's more than a cow growing up on a grass field in Denmark and then served on a platter two hours later from an organic farmer or whatever. Like surely that's worse. Well, yeah, that argument can certainly be made, and and uh, you know the, I mean, the more we look into this, people are going back to data from two thousand six, this livestock's long shadow report, and so much data has come out since that time showing that there are so many sources of methane that weren't accounted for back then. We know that uh, biogenic methane from cows is cyclical; it's it's broken down. I mean, there's the impact is is much overstated, and it's clearly to sell processed food. I think and. Uh, Unfortunately, do you, um, so in Thailand, you said you have to import the beef. I assume that's coming from Australia, New Zealand. I would imagine just part of that part of the world. Yeah, is where yeah. it that's mania from. too. But I also eat local beef. They have local Thai beef here and okay. it, it's fine. It's, yeah. it's, it's good. Um, yeah, yeah, it's fine. And it, that's really cheap. Uh, I can get about a kilo is about $10 for well, a kilo of some kind of, yeah. That's not, that's kind not, of depends. it's kind of hard here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's not bad at all. I mean, you know, it's, that's, you know, five bucks a pound basically, which is very, yeah. you know, that's something that you, even in the United States, that would be considered relatively cheap. So that's not bad at all. And I, I just, yeah. and, and I guess the cost of living in Thailand is probably less than it would have been in Denmark. I would imagine. Correct. Oh yes. Denmark is extremely expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's, it's way cheaper. Uh, that being said, Actually, meat is not that expensive in Denmark. Mm. It's not that expensive. Well, um, so you can definitely live off a of carnivore diet in Denmark and have a, a pretty decent budget. Well, we'll see. Let's we'll see if the prices are affected by what they're doing in the Netherlands. You know, with Holland, with their you know going after the farmers and no. trying to cut back on that. Do you? Is there? Is there? Well, is there a sizable Danish community in Thailand? Is there a bunch of Danish uh, immigrants? There's quite a few expats yeah. here. Yeah. There's quite a few expats. Um, I think one thing that most Danish people have in common here is that they don't like the weather back home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Denmark is very cold and gray most of the year. And if you're really lucky, you'll get three weeks of summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and I, th I think like equally important for your health is vitamin D. I, I think people are so scared of the sun. I'm not saying that you should be out in the sun eight hours a day getting sunburned, mm -hmm. but I'm saying getting a little bit of sun I don't think that's going to kill you. Yeah, I mean, some 20, 30 minutes a day, I mean, it's, it's kind of a nice minimum, bare minimum exposure, I think. Uh, what? So you said you met your wife in, in Thailand. Was she was she Thai in, or was she from? Yeah, yeah she's Thai. Yeah, she's Thai. Yeah, what, yeah. What, 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 I mean, obviously, she didn't grow up on a carnivore diet, I would imagine. What does she, no, what does she no, think about no. that? Does she think you're crazy or what, what's the deal like with that? No, I mean, I mean, she, she's happy that it works because I don't think she enjoyed me uh being in so much pain like any good wife would <laughs> i guess uh but no she she was she would never transition into a carnivore diet that that, that wouldn't work for her like she she loves her thai food too much but without like thai food in general i'd say there's a lot of vegetables in it right mm -hmm. and for me that just doesn't work mm -hmm. i just cannot do it yeah it probably so, probably affects your ibs i'm assuming correct Oh, it's terrible, man. It's and they put sugar and they put soy sauce and oyster sauce in, in almost everything, right? And mm -hmm. if I eat soy sauce, I guarantee you the next morning I'm gonna wake up with a pounding headache. Yeah. And yet in Thailand, I mean I would correct me if I'm wrong, but assuming just like many of those other Southeast Asian countries, there's not a lot of obesity there. They're very slim, some of the slimmest people on the on the planet. Is that fair to say? Actually, I'm, I'm I'm gonna go back and say it's the same as Denmark. It's really? getting worse, and there is a ton of obese people here. Really? But 
compare when I first got to Thailand. That's like just on a vacation. That's got to be about 16 years ago now. I don't remember it being as bad as this now. And now there are fast food restaurants everywhere. They're everywhere. And it's all of them. It's all of the ones that I saw when I lived in California. Yeah. They're everywhere. Yeah. And, and well, yeah, that, like I said, we're expect we're exporting the, the sort of the disease management model across the world and that will follow by the pharmaceuticals that will come in behind that probably within a short order um oh yes do, so as far as uh you know as far well what, what is it are you eating how much you're eating a day i mean you, you i mean at least from your shoulders up you look relatively lean i can't tell but uh you look like you're in rel no. relatively normal weight what do you what do, what do you consume on a daily basis just out of curiosity um i mean I, I consume probably let let's say on an average day, like it depends. I like to mix it up, like I said, right? I, I feel most full if I eat red meat, but I, I mix it up. So I will take, let's say, during the day, I'll probably eat about 12 eggs a day on average. Then I eat about some days. I don't eat pork every day. Pork is like a treat for me. So I eat that a few times a week. I will take some pork belly and make it crispy. Mm -hmm. then I'll probably eat like Two, three hundred grams of that. Then some days I will eat ten drumsticks and a kilo of red meat. So I it really averages. Like I, I still do intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. Like I don't eat breakfast at all. I always work out on an empty stomach. Um, I, I've done that for so many years and it works so well for me. I don't like eating before my workouts. Um, so yeah, I'd say probably like on an average day, 12 eggs, two chicken breasts, a kilo of red meat. Hmm. Yeah, stuff like that. Like that's a normal that's a, day, that's a, for that's me. A, yeah, that's a decent amount of food. That's, you know, three pounds of food a day or something like that. It's uh, Yeah, so, so it, that, that works for me. And if I want to give myself a treat, I'll make a bunch load of crispy pork belly. And I'll sit and eat that like a snack. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I love quite, it. It can be quite good. And just for for frame of reference, I mean, well, I, I don't know. Are you tall? I mean, a lot of people in Denmark are very tall. I don't know. What are your dimensions? You know, uh, six, two. six I'm, two. I'm six two, and yeah. uh, right now I'm pretty stable at eighty six kilos. Okay. Um, yeah. Six two, eighty six kilos, and I'm thirty five, and I got my six pack back, yeah. so I'm quite lean. I, I yeah I'm I'm in good shape I say okay. I've also been working out for six days a week for the almost ten years yeah um, yeah so 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 I but that but that's one thing another thing about the carnivore diet I I remember when I started working out let's say ten years ago so like ish ten years ish everybody told me there's no way you're gonna gain muscle if you don't eat a lot of carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. You need carbohydrates to gain muscle. So I said, okay, so that's what I did back then. Then I've always been fasting, intermittent fasting, I've been doing it for 15 years. So even before I started training, I just didn't like the breakfast because like I said, when I was a kid, I would always get a bad stomach after eating breakfast. So I just stopped doing it because it just worked for me. So I started weightlifting. And I was fasting between 16 and 18 hours a day. Mm -hmm. And I went from no muscle to a decent amount of muscle. And I was like, I don't understand why everybody's telling me that if you don't eat eight meals a day, if you don't eat carbohydrates, you cannot gain muscle if you're doing intermittent fasting. It's impossible. And it, it's, I don't understand. Like, but why does it work? And I thought to myself, I surely, I'm not special. There's no way there's something special about me. Yeah, well, I mean, the literature, the, the muscle re literature is pretty clear. It, it, you just need to get a certain amount of food in during the day. It doesn't have to be every two hours. And as long as you get enough protein, enough calories, and you're going to, you can, and, you, and you train, you're going to put on muscle. So carbs are not required. Eating frequently is not required. It can make, it can give you a slight advantage, but generally you can still build plenty of muscle without that. Um, I see that all the time. So it's, it's, you know, even the literature supports that. So that's, it's good to hear. Um, as far as, uh, you know, you're, are you traveling much? Do you have to travel much with what you do? No, no, not at all. I, I'm, I'm quite safe from here. I mean, I, I, I travel around to play golf. 
Um, so, but, but that's it. But like work wise, I can work from anywhere, right? As long as I have a laptop, then it's pretty good. <laughs> how, how has your golf game gone since you started carnivore? Have you improved? <laughs> oh, well, that's, that's a really good question. I, I'm not a very good golfer. So I don't think the carnivore influenced that very much, but I will say though, that my lower back pain used to be worse so after i started the carnivore diet i actually noticed that my inflammation i think in my lower back went mm-hmm. down and it wasn't as bad after playing golf for many days straight yeah so and that might have had an influence it could be that or it could be because i started stretching a lot i'm sure that had an effect too um yeah but yeah well, there's one thing that's 100 percent certain with the carnivore diet is the mental clarity mm-hmm. and that's especially because the, my mi- migraine auras with the brain fog and dizziness, like all of that is gone. So yeah, that's definitely affected it. Yeah, that's 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 uh, again a very common thing that I that I'll often see is is uh, improvements in mental health, mental clarity, mood, things things like that. Um, any uh, other? Have you noticed any other skin? Any other kind of things you notice that are different? <laughs> Well, actually, yeah. Like when I was a kid, I used to have a lot of acne on my face. And even when I was adult, I still had it. But when I started on the ketogenic diet, that's when it started disappearing a little bit. It got way better. And then when I started on the carnivore diet, I didn't have a pimple for a few months. I'm like, this is incredible. I remember when I was a kid, every single dermatologist that I went to, they told me, don't eat fat, eat vegetables and eat fruit. Don't eat fat. Fat is causing your pimples. And now I'm eating so much fat, so much more than I've ever done. And I don't have pimples. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people that, what I, I forgot to ask you, you, you didn't mention much about dairy. Are you consuming a lot of dairy in your, in your diet or no? I, I do sometimes as a treat. I will eat some organic yogurt. Mm-hmm. That's it. But I, it's not. Me being from Denmark, when I when I grew up, we were, mm-hmm. I was drinking two liters of milk right. every single day yeah. because that's what you do in Denmark. So mm-hmm. I just got enough dairy, I think, when I was young. <laughs> I, and you can't really get really good quality milk here yeah. in Thailand. Yeah, I was going to assume that dairy is not very popular in that part of the world. And as you pointed no, out, no. In, in Denmark and some of the other countries up in that area, dairy is widely consumed, some of the most dairy and most biggest dairy consumption in the world. It has to do, and some people say that, that it leads to greater height, you know, stature. There's a lot of people yeah. that will, will, will. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I mean, it is a, a, the average height in Denmark is quite tall, right? It's not as tall as Holland, but mm-hmm. it's it's up there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When when's the last time you went back to to Denmark? Well, it was unfortunately it was in January of this year, and because I finally had to bow down and get the vaccine. So I got a vaccine certificate so I could travel home. <laughs> Before that, I wasn't able to go back for more than two years. And then I had some stuff going on in my family, so I didn't have a choice, but I was not allowed to board an airplane without getting the vaccine. So I had no choice. Mm. I just had to do it because I had to go home. So, but that's a whole other story about that. Yeah, um, it's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, I've not had to do that at this point. So I've been fortunate so far, but... Yeah. Anyway, it's a shame how this sort of, you know, forcing of, uh, you know, imposing this, this stuff on people without their, their yeah, cons- I, consent. I think that of- that went way out of proportion to say mildly. Mm-hmm. What do you, so as far as uh, diet, do you see, do you see a reason to shift off the diet? Are you enjoying it? Is it sustainable? A lot of people say it's not sustainable. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, like I said before, for me, at the end of the day, it's just food. It's just food. And who doesn't like a good steak? Who doesn't like crispy pork belly? Mm-hmm. It's it, it's quite easy. People, I, I personally think that diet, when it comes to diet, people make it way harder than it should be because it's just food. But I think it has something to do with the social aspect of food, mm-hmm. like the way it is now. Yeah. That you have to go out, you have to go out to a restaurant, you have to drink wine, you have to do this, you have to do that. And you can have a lot of fun without doing that. And if you go there, just go there and just eat a big steak. What's the issue? Right. Everybody loves a big steak. <laughs> well, well, there's some there's some mentally ill people that don't like steak. 
all this food. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> that, I take that back. Not everybody loves steak. Some people actually hate it, which is odd to me, but yeah, yeah, they each of right. their own, right? Yeah, and I, and I think that's a very important part. You can still have a full, robust, entertaining, very vivid, rich life without having to indulge in every birthday cake and cupcake and this and that that's out there. What is the Thai? Is is a Thai culture? I know when I was in Malaysia, it was a very you know Malaysia is a very uh, um, diverse type of city with a lot of popular a lot of cultures colliding there. Lots yeah. of different food options. The food is a very big part of that culture. Is that the same in Thailand where everybody's always constantly oh, yes. eating and there's oh, yes. always going to restaurants? Is that is that fair to say? Yeah, it is. It's very much a part of the Thai culture, like food and mm -hmm. having 20 different dishes on the table and everybody shares. So food is a really, really big part of it. Um, and especially dessert. Especially the what? The dessert. The yeah. dessert. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody so, wants everybody. Everybody wants the sugar. Yeah, for sure. You can see that. Yeah. So everybody loves their sugar and their sugar and everything. So yeah, I mean, it, it. The only thing that can be hard is that you can't really go to a traditional Thai place. Well, you can because I can just eat grilled chicken. But mm -hmm. getting a steak is difficult. But then that day I'll just eat grilled chicken, and mm -hmm. that's it. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Sure. What uh, you know, as far as uh, so you haven't had. When was the last time you had a migraine? Honestly, I stopped counting. I don't know. And yeah. that's probably the first time I can say that in five plus years. Wow. I honestly can't remember, but it's more than a month by now. It is more than a month. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty, that's, that's, that's a huge improvement in quality of life, I would imagine. So, uh, it's, so some would say, uh, well, you know, you're eating all this red meat, there's saturated fat in that, you know. Um, and you you may be putting yourself at risk, high risk for heart disease. What do you what do you say mm -hmm. to someone that says that? Let's just say let's just say that um, they're correct and you are putting your risk for higher risk for heart disease, and that's debatable in my view. But let's just say they're correct. What what would you say to that person? Well, I say okay. First of all, show me a study that proves your point. Like I, I want to see a lot of scientific evidence, right? And there's like you said. There's, it's debatable. Does it actually cause heart disease? And then my second argument would be if they actually could prove their point and saying that you might die from a heart attack when you're 65 years old, then I say, okay, I'd rather die at the age of 65 and not have migraines 20 days a week mm -hmm. because people that have debilitating migraines and they've had them like on average 20 days a month, they yeah. don't want to live until they're 90. Yeah. Let me put it that way. Yeah. And I think that's a fair thing because, you know, I, you know, I, 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 I pose this, this sort of hypothetical scenario and it's not a hypothetical. It happens all the time. I'll see people yeah. that go on a carnivore diet. They lose a bunch of weight. Their quality of life improves immensely. They come off their medications. They feel great. And they go to the doctor and the doctor says, Oh my God, you got to stop this crazy diet. You're going to die of a heart attack. And then you go, well, what do the rest of your patients die of, doctor? And he goes, well, they die of heart attacks. So it's like, you know, you want me to have a worse quality of life and die of the same thing anyway? You know, it's like, it's 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 sort of the same. But I, I think that's, I think, you know, we're all going to die at some point. We're all going to, I probably will die of heart disease or cancer. I mean, that's just the way it is. But I, like you, I would rather have a good quality of life for as many years. And also, I don't think I that's the meat's fault. I don't either. If that Honestly. happens to you, I, I I don't think that anybody can blame the meat. At least that's my point of view because I'm 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 not a doctor, right? So I I can't tell you exactly what's going on in my body. I can just tell people as a person, as a layman person, why have I never felt better? Yeah. T -t -t if it's so dangerous, why have I never felt better? Yeah, I mean, some people say, "Well, you feel pretty good when you take cocaine too," or some some nonsense like that. And it does, you know, it it does seem to defy logic, you know. And I am a doctor, and I will tell you, even with that, you know, years and decades of training and, and experience, there's a certain amount of common sense there. If someone is unequivocally doing better from an overall health standpoint, it's hard to make the argument that they're somehow killing themselves. It just doesn't make sense in any shape, form, or fashion. You've got one biomarker that people are concerned about and it's like well yeah. i mean who are you comparing it to you're never comparing it to someone on the same diet you're always you've always got some version of a standard american junk food diet and that's a very yeah. different situation in my view and i think until yeah. we uh, until we study this and there has been like i said to the credit of david ludwig and a few other 
researchers that have done that, the studies on the carnivore diet up to this point, and they're limited and they're not, you know, the world's greatest studies. But the indication we have so far is it's safe, it's effective, people do well on it. And, and that should be the, in my view, that should be the assumption going forward until somebody can prove otherwise. You know, the way I would do that is say, let's study a bunch of carnivore diet people, follow them for, I don't know, 10, 15 years and see what happens to them. But yeah. you know, whether that's going to happen yeah. or not, I don't know. Yeah. And to like say a little story about your cocaine argument, I, I had a little uh, debate, so to speak, with a vegetarian and she used the kind of the same argument. She mm -hmm. said, yeah, but alcohol also makes you feel great. And then my argument was, yeah, but alcohol makes you feel terrible the day after. I don't feel terrible the next day after I eat a steak for dinner. Yeah. I still feel great. Right. I never feel bad. So that argument, either like you said with the cocaine, I've heard that too on YouTube on some clips, and they're saying, "Yeah, but cocaine also makes you feel great." I'm like, "Yeah, but I've never done cocaine, but I've seen enough documentaries that I'm pretty sure that when you're off cocaine, you don't feel that great anymore." Yeah, yeah, and it wrecks your health and wrecks your life, and you know whatever. There's all kinds of negative yeah. things that go on there, and it's like, and this exactly. is, and this is the thing, you know, people will say, "Well, you could lose, you could lose." You could lose weight on a cocaine diet or a heroin diet. That's true, but you don't get healthier. And what I see is people not only lose weight on a carnivore diet, they also, you know, pretty objectively get healthier. And uh, for the most part, with rare, with you know, with rare exception. Uh, and so people that are critical of this, and it's just it's just comical to me. I'm just like, why aren't you just celebrating the success of these people? Just say, hey, great, good for you, keep going. Instead, we have people saying, well, you could have done it with a with a a high protein diet and a calorie deficit, or you could have done it just by counting calories or on and on and on. I'm like, well, guess what? It didn't work for them in the past. Most of these people have already tried. That. Yeah. And I know certainly for migraines, I mean, they're not even attempting to suggest a diet that says, here's some, no. you know, here's some, uh, whatever, you know, here's, here's a drug, take this. And, you know, obviously. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, I've like, I wrote you the email, right. I've been to three different neurologists in three different countries and not a single one of them. The only neurologist that ever mentioned anything about diet was a female neurologist here in Thailand. Mm -hmm. She also told me about the ketogenic diet because she had used it for a patient with epilepsy. Yeah. So she hinted that maybe we should try that. And that's when I already started. So it was like, it was a moot point at that because I already fixed my issue. But at least she knew about it. What, are, what, are, and just because I don't have any experiences, what is the healthcare system like in Thailand? Are there, are there any doctors that, that actually are promoting nutrition as a, as a form of therapy for anybody? Well, I mean, there was the one neurologist that I talked to, right, that hinted at the ketogenic diet that it worked for kids with epilepsy or just patients in general with epilepsy. But I mean, like the, the, the one neurologist that told me that I should probably get on statins, well, I'm going to go as far and say in my book, he was morbidly obese. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't really take nutritional advice from him very serious, to be honest. And I, I, I've, 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 I've seen so many doctors now, like through the years, right, because of these headaches and some of them are eating sneakers bars and stuff like that. And that's fine. But if that's your lunch every day, I don't think you're in any position to give me nutritional advice in general. Yeah, I know. And I know it's, it's, it's some people who take offense at, but I, I think that, you know, if you're taking adv nutritional advice from somebody that doesn't seem to be able to get their own house in order, I mean, you got to question, you know, if they, if their if their advice is good, because, you know, you know, a lot of people will say, well, you just cut calories and exercise more and, and well, why is it not working for you, Doc? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because, exactly. hard, because so why I, don't you go to the treadmill? Well, yeah, because <laughs> the advice doesn't. It's not hard. It's it, it for most people, unless you're addressing satiety and some of these other issues, you don't really, you don't really get a long lasting result. It's very difficult for that. Some people can be successful for it, but I think a lot of people struggle with that. Um, do you? I mean, are you evangelizing this diet to any people? Is any people that Asked you what you're doing, or I mean, because you, I mean, you, you, I mean, you were never, you were never obese. So there's a lot of times people just, when someone's like 100 pounds or away and they lose 100 pounds, people are like, what the heck did you do? But you, it's probably hard to see migraines. Probably no, no one really saw you with migraines outside of your very close acquaintances. Yeah. But uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the average man on the street yeah. didn't know you used to suffer from migraines. Actually, I, I, I had a few comments that because 
after I started the ketogenic diet, but especially the carnivore diet, I'll say that I leaned out a lot. And it, especially during workouts, like the veins are very, very visible. So I did, I did have one guy ask me what I did differently. Mm -hmm. And I just told him about the diet and I just said, I cut out the carbs. And of course he was one big question mark. He was like, how can you gain muscle without carbs? And then I just explained to him, like, and then my skin, my skin just looks more smooth. Yeah. I think, I mean, it, it doesn't really look that smooth anyway, but <laughs> that's after years of sun exposure and surfing and not putting on any sunscreen. So, but it's still better than it used to be. Let me put it that way. How is the surfing in Thailand? I understand it's pretty decent. Is that a fair assessment? It's, you, you can get lucky in the monsoon season. You can get some decent swells down in Phuket. I've had a lot of fun there, but mostly when I lived in the Philippines, I lived in an island at an island called Shurgao, which is out in the Pacific Ocean. It was absolutely fantastic. And Fantastic. Then, and how how is the Philippines as far as I mean, I think Philippines may be worse with obesity than, than than Thailand, perhaps, maybe. I don't know. Actually, I talked to one of my Irish friends about this uh a few months ago. Like I we used to uh hang out a lot in the Philippines and he came to visit me in Thailand and he actually said, because he was in Thailand three years ago, and he said what I said, he said, Is it me or is there more obese people here now than there was back three years ago and i was like i think you're right but like i said i i don't pay that much attention to it but i i definitely see a lot of obese people here a lot but like i said if there's fast food everywhere and if it's cheaper it's i i I can see, I, I can see why people eat it. Like it's, yeah. well, it tastes good. I mean, that's, I mean, there's no doubt about it. They know how to make it taste good and it's, if it's cheap yeah. and convenient and we have that problem, that's why, that's one of the reasons why we see such a problem with the, the, the sort of socioeconomically challenged people, the poor people in, in our country is that they, these are all the obese people are because they, they only, all they can afford is this really cheap, poor, poor, poorly nutritious food that uh, unfortunately is just driving this immense obesity epidemic we have here um do you do you have any social media that you participate in is that something you do no i i haven't had social media i deleted absolutely everything about <laughs> eight years ago i think Good for you. i i don't like it it's it's a waste of my time yeah. it's all just <laughs> like one big argument i i sometimes i will go and check something out just for the laugh mm -hmm. <laughs> But I don't have any profiles. I, it's a it's a total waste of my time. Right. <laughs> I don't like it. So no, yeah, I think I I can see where that that's the case. And I sometimes I wish I didn't have to do this stuff. But I'm trying to get this message out there. This is you know they're they're not they're not putting me on the TV on the mainstream media to talk about this stuff. So you have to find no, alternative channels. No, that's to, for sure. No, to get this stuff no. out there. And it, it's it's uh, sad. I mean, I one thing that I will say though that the reason why I agreed to this mainly is because. I personally did so much research about this diet and migraines and I couldn't find that much about it. So I thought, you know what, if there's people sitting out there with migraines and they listen to this and they can get what I got out of it, please just do it. Like it's your quality of life is going to explode. <laughs> yeah. there And there are mil millions of migraine sufferers throughout the world. It's not a, you know, it's a, it's a, not an uncommon thing. And that is a, a off. It can be a very, problematic quality of life well lasa thank you so much um i appreciate you staying thank up you. Till, till late at the night uh this is a, this is a great good. great Love information it. and uh, keep up the good work and uh you know if you want to stop back in sometime feel free free to sure. do so and uh sure. otherwise well, uh, enjoy your time and time i'm hoping to get to get out to that part of the world at some point i know i got some traveling Coming up, that's one part of the world I'd yeah. like to see. My, if, my uh, if you ever come, shoot yeah. me an email. I'll okay. take you to some really good steakhouses. Very, very nice. <laughs> good to know. Yeah, my, my my experience in Asia right now has been well. I guess I guess I, guess I did go to uh, uh, Malaysia, but other than that, it was just Afghanistan, which wasn't so fun. But anyway, I'd like to get oh, back no. out there. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll see you guys. We have another one of these at three p.m. today. There's another guest if you guys are interested. So I've got to double up. Then I got to fly to Florida. Or I got to hop on a plane right after that. So. You guys have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Lassa. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.